All right, hello everyone. Foda has a little trouble connecting, but hopefully it will work this time. Foda? I think I'm on right now. Hey Joseph. All right. All right. Cool. Hi. Hey, yes. Hi, How's it going? Yeah, very well, very well. Thank you. So, uh, uh, how are you today? Oh man, I'm doing good, man. Finally recovering from uh, from Norway. That was like quite a bit of a trek, but uh, finally doing. All right. All right. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> cool. Cool. I'm 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 fine. It, it's been uh, quite rainy this time, but uh, but it's good. It's good. Right. So yeah, uh, let me just introduce uh, this Twitter Space. So welcome everyone to another session of uh, Fiat Free Twitter Space, co-hosted by Trezor. And tonight we will discuss uh, the Bitcoin adoption in Senegal and perhaps some other African countries with uh, Fonet Diop. And before we get into it, some organizational matters. So this space is going to be recorded and will be published later on the Trezor YouTube channel. And initially, we will have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Fode. Uh, but uh, listeners, feel free to raise your hand throughout the discussion and we will give you an opportunity to join in and ask your questions. Uh, yeah, and as I said already uh, this session is recorded so if you don't want your voice recorded just uh, shoot us a message and we will ask your question for you so let's get into it uh for that uh for that is a bitcoiner from senegal uh, he's the founder of bitcoin developers academy uh recently in Miami, Fode announced the africa bitcoin conference that will take place in december in ghana and we will cover all of these topics uh, so welcome for that. Uh, maybe to get things started, could you tell us a little bit about uh, the music that you chose for this Twitter space? Oh. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, thank you so much for having me. I really feel honored to be like this on this uh, on this Twitter space and uh, just sharing information as always with uh, people that I really respect. Um, yeah, so the music actually really came from um, this from Ryan Seltzer. I found him through my roommate in San Francisco. And it's like a blend of um, kind of a, like like trap music plus some kind of chill funk. It's really hard to explain, but his name is uh, Ryan Celsius uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Celsius Sounds. And uh, yeah, I really like it actually. He has some things like really some like five hour mixes or like 24 hour mixes. And I really like to listen, listen to them when I work. All right. Uh, so he was your roommate in San Francisco, right? No, actually, no. I, I discovered him through my roommate. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. So uh, you used to live in San Francisco in the U.S. and now you live in Senegal, if I'm not mistaken. Well, actually, well, I'm actually, I, well, I lived in San Francisco for, 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 for a few years, but right now I split my time between Florida and uh, Senegal right now. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, like, a dual citizen, so I'm actually, like, really spending my time, spending my time between the U.S. and, uh, and West Africa right now. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, because this is what I wanted to ask if you actually like uh, mm -hmm. uh, see what's going on in Senegal like uh, firsthand or if you are yep. In, yep. in contact with your family, but you actually uh, do spend time in Senegal. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I do spend time in, especially spending a lot of time there, as a matter of fact. And actually, this year, actually, even more so this year. Because, uh -huh. um, because of the conference and everything else. But we can talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. So maybe if you could describe for us the monetary system of Senegal. That's the CFA franc, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So this CFA franc, one of my favorite topics. I've been, I've been talking about it quite a, quite, a, quite a bit these last couple of years. Um, so the, the franc is called the, the CFA, uh, CFA franc. Um, and it's money shared by 15 uh, African countries, uh, 15 French-speaking African countries. And it's really like the like comes from the vestige of colonialism. So these 15 countries used to be French colonies. And then once uh, we got independent from France, uh, France decided to leave this money behind so they could really control actually 15 of these countries. So to this day, the money that we use there, which is a franc CFA, was initially pegged versus the French franc. But then when the, when France joined the, the, the EU, then it was basically, uh, it, then it became pegged to the euro, loosely pegged to the euro per se. So there's like a fixed parity kind of exchange. But it is not our money. It is not our sovereign money. The money is made by France and it's pretty much printed in the south of France to be distributed in these particular countries. Yeah, and uh, the CFA franc was uh, devalued quite a lot over like oh, 70 yes. years. Yeah. 
Yep, yep, unfortunately, unfortunately. So for me, like, uh, actually, the worst one really was in '94 when I was going to college in the, in, in the in the U.S. So that year, particularly that year, the money was devaluated by 50 percent. So really, literally, actually, the money that I had to go to college was really worth half overnight because it was actually devaluation. And at the time, it was like it was uh, it was really decision made by by Europeans for Africans, right? Because allegedly it would make our exports like cheaper to basically sell our goods in the international market because our currency was cheaper. But then on the flip side of it, our imports also became twice as expensive because everything that we buy basically from somewhere else became like twice as expensive, and especially stuff that we bought from France because obviously France have like the 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 control over like this actually these uh, West African markets as far as like where they buy their goods and who they get services from. So unfortunately, it was a double edged sword. And it really actually, like, really, I felt like set us back like quite a few years. Mm-hmm. And what was the perception of the CFA monitor regime, you know, among like the citizens? Uh... Well, now, now, like, um, you know, like before, before social media, like there were obviously activists, people who like really talked about talked against this particular currency itself. But it was more like it was more, I, I believe, with the advent of um, uh, social media and YouTube, that there was maybe like more awareness that actually activists in these particular countries are becoming more visible, and you can tell actually online that like people are being more and more vocal, and especially the younger population because they are very educated, they are very much so like informed, and they understand that there's something wrong with our currency. And I believe that the majority of the people today want to see a change because we want to see basically these countries get on the path of uh, financial sovereignty, which mm-hmm. which we, we do not currently have, unfortunately. Yeah, and um, like, is there a, a call for like a financial sovereignty in terms of having your own national currency or maybe adopting some uh, something like Bitcoin, let's say, something neutral? Sure, sure, sure. So, well, you know, like, okay, so that's a very complex question because it has like it has like a lot of a lot of parts like in it per se, right? So lately, we've seen that um, in the CAR in the Central African mm-hmm. Republic, they have pretty much like adopted Bitcoin as legal tender, like basically the second country to ever do it after El Salvador, yeah. right? Now, is Bitcoin going to become like the legal country for entire nation? That I'm not sure yet, and I, I'm, I don't think it actually also is prudent to do so at this stage of development for Bitcoin itself. I feel like Bitcoin is still very young, right? Can mm-hmm. it really actually power the economy and the financial infrastructure of entire nation? Looking at the volatility of the of this particular asset, I don't think maybe it might be the right choice or the right position right now. But I can see Bitcoin as something actually we can build on top of to basically maybe like build a, the, 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 a future financial infrastructure like for this particular like like actually zone of the world itself right mm-hmm. so now the, the reality is that okay let's say let's say let's say we say okay well these countries do not no longer want for france to print the currency right so what is going to happen maybe actually we have, we have a couple of options right we all understand that money will go digital now is this digital money going to be made by sovereign individual countries in africa i really doubt it Because again, they will have to develop their own, like uh, uh, um, um, you know, central bank currency or like some or own local currency, a digital one somehow, be able to like really secure it, distribute it. You know, mm-hmm. is it going to be made made by a startup? Maybe, maybe a startup actually will be in charge of like maybe minting the particular currency of this country, so that actually, so so the startup will play the role of a central bank. Uh, that I am not really sure, but I think right now. At least, like a country like a uh, Central African Republic, picking picking Bitcoin as legal tender, like I, I believe, like, actually sets the path for us to actually gain financial sovereignty, right? I'm not saying like actually that's the ultimate question, that's the ultimate answer, but I believe actually it's a first step for at least us to have a choice of actually what we want to use, like as our local currency, and then we can basically move forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, so, and and sorry, that's a kind of convoluted, convoluted answer, but I don't think it's like I don't think it's an easy answer, like per se. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely not. Uh, so maybe if you could describe uh, how does it look with uh, Bitcoin in Senegal? Are there like exchanges, uh, ATMs, uh, or okay. is it all peer to peer? What's what's your perception of yes, Bitcoin yes. in Senegal? Yes, I would I would say like right now I would say more than eighty percent. I would say that, and this is like really from numbers that I've done my own research and talking to people. I talk to people every single time. I even talked to someone this morning, as a matter of fact, right. I believe that 80% of the exchanges happen like peer to peer basically. Mm-hmm. 
uh, mostly like uh, WhatsApp groups. WhatsApp groups are like number one, and then they have Telegram groups, and of course you have like a signal, the smaller groups like here and there. But most of the people basically like have these actually existing groups that have been there for a very long time. And what it is is like they will basically you you send them uh, mobile money. Mobile money actually is our local version of like um, uh, you know like Venmo, like Cash App kind of style yeah. payments. Then and, and actually somebody will basically receive like receive the payment and send you send you the the BTC to your to your to your desired desired address. But most of it, I would say, more than eighty percent for sure, happens basically on WhatsApp groups and, and OTC groups like that. Mm -hmm. Are there any ATMs in the country? Um, there are no currently no ATMs or that I know of personally. I mean, at least the last time I was home, there was not like there's not like any ATMs whatsoever, right? Because I, I believe the law is still fairly fairly gray in that in a particular area. So I haven't seen any Bitcoin ATMs anywhere there. Mm -hmm. Not yet, at least. Yeah. And in terms of on-chain versus Lightning, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer exchange, is it more based on Lightning? Actually, well, okay. So the peer-to-peer -peer exchange actually is, is mostly based on, actually, I would say like actually on-chain payments, you know? Mm -hmm. I've seen people because I, like, I personally myself run most of the meetups like there, especially like, uh, like uh, for like lightning stuff. And I mean, of course, like there's more activities happening actually, like, actually at home now. But the idea is that um, like people are still much, very much so like uh, familiar with like actually how on-chain works because most of them will you, you, you use like exchanges like um, sometimes like, uh, of course, like, uh, like Binance, which is like really one of the most dominant ones out there. Or maybe like Paxful here and there for like for like for like uh, um, uh, for peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, but most people actually would actually do like on-chain basically um, exchanges. And then of course, like there's more and more education happening with Lightning, but I believe actually with small amount, like smaller amounts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess if it's all based on peer-to-peer -peer or eighty percent, as you say, people are mm -hmm. used to self-custody their coins, right? Um, well, some do. Some more advanced actually users do, right? They self -custody, self custody. They will basically have like a self custody custodial wallets and stuff. But I do believe that the users that I came across, a lot of them are are are, are on Binance. All right. right? So so yes. they buy Bitcoin on their Binance account, not into yes, actually, yes. Yeah. exactly, exactly, right. So they so they basically get it deposited on the on 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 the, on the exchange accounts. I'm not sure exactly where they moved from there. I wish I had like more insights. But most of the people basically, I mean, I believe like the more advanced ones usually have like self custodial wallets. And then the other ones basically have like do actually custodial like uh, exchange, on exchanges on third party basically wallets. All right. All right. Um, so, what do you think uh, is the biggest obstacle to adopting Bitcoin in Senegal more broadly? Um, I think like, I think, I think one obviously is the volatility of like of this particular asset, right? Yeah. Because when we're talking about like this part of the world, the reality is that um, if you pour like these swings, these downswings of like you know ten percent, six percent, twenty percent, actually takes actually takes quite a bit out of your budget, right? If you have a fifth of your family, if you if really actually this this BDC, BDC that you have is your livelihood, you cannot really actually stomach the swings. And actually now we've been noticing more and more in Africa basically that actually more usage for like a stable coins, right? Mm -hmm. And actually stable coins because actually people understand more like the stable value what it means that a hundred dollars that I have today will be worth a hundred dollars tomorrow. Technically, of course, that not not like taking into account inflation and, and like all those other details, or whatever. But idea is that the balance on my wallet today is going to be the same tomorrow, no matter what, because it, it is a stable value, right? So I believe that with Bitcoin itself, it's more like really education because. It's a very complex asset. It, it is not easy to explain. It is not easy to explain to someone who's maybe not uh, financially well off, unfortunately, right? Because again, in that part of the world, people are mostly live hand to mouth, right? Whatever yeah. comes in today, they basically use it to feed their family and to address like particular, like really problems that they need to solve right there and then right away, right away. Because, you know, in a developing world, it seems like there's always problems and never solutions. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's always, <laughs> somebody, somebody always needs to need, need something somewhere, you know, it's, it's kind of complicated, unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and well, in terms of like what you've seen in Oslo, uh, because I, I, I got the perception like there's um, there's a lot of solutions actually out there, but maybe yes. as you say, the problem is the education because we've got yes. like the B BTC pay server, you got mm -hmm. Moon Wallet, and like mm -hmm. the ecosystem has improved quite a lot over the years. Yep. So uh, the, maybe perhaps the problem is uh, Senegal is a French speaking country, right? Are there any yes. good like uh, information, educational resources? Yes, 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 actually, yeah. I mean, like, people are like, 
I've, I've seen actually projects coming up there in Senegal, like here and there. Like I, I basically do what I can myself personally when I do like workshops and meetups, and as, as well actually as well as my younger brother. He's pretty much like that. Does a lot of stuff local, but that is definitely a problem, right? Because if you look at the world's information or the, the, actually how information is basically organized in the world, most of it is in English. Actually, the majority of it, right? Of course, there's like a big part of it now in Chinese and other things, whatever. But most of it actually is in English. And if you look at like the world's population again, that part of the world is maybe like a little bit over 200 million people, mostly French speaking. And we know that most of the, most of the, most of the information doesn't trickle down properly in French, actually, unfortunately, right? Yeah. And, if we, and if we notice in Africa itself, like the English speaking like parts of Africa are moving way faster than the French speaking ones. If you look at Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, uh, Ghana, all these basically English speaking parts like parts are really moving like right along. They have like really amazing exchanges. You look, you look at the ones in uh, in Nigeria, like Bitnab. You look at you look at like the ones in uh, in in South Africa, like Luno. I mean, like or even Bycoins in uh, in in uh, in, uh, in Nigeria. I mean, these places actually have like really have even actually way more competition happening there in sort of like actually in terms of exchanges. But if you look at the French speaking parts of Africa, it is still trickling in. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately right so like slowly but surely it's getting there and i believe of course like it needs to be like more education like people like myself who go back luckily who are like speak actually multiple languages be able to actually share information but as always it's more like it, 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 of course like a, i feel like there needs to be like a bigger effort to basically get this information translated but it also needs to be like a bigger effort on the population's like side as well for them to get um, get more uh maybe actually make an effort to basically learn english right because it's very okay. important Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah, uh, but the sorry, French sorry, sorry. is uh, the primary language, right? And uh, so, so uh, uh, what percentage would you say in Senegal speaks English? Oh, that's a really good question. But, well, actually, but most of the people who go to go through high school actually have at least like English, like as their second uh, language after French, All right, basically, yeah. right? So, but it's not really English that you really can communicate, and it's, it's more like British English. Actually, for me, what I learned actually in in, in actually school was in British English. But most people actually also have, I mean, have, I mean, nowadays uh, uh, have access to YouTube. I mean, my brother, actually, my brother now does very well with English, actually. He doesn't, do, he hasn't really spent much time actually in the US, but he does actually pretty good, uh, he does actually pretty good uh, understanding of English. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, let's, let's discuss uh, uh, the situation in Senegal now, like in terms of like political uh viewpoint. So mm -hmm. uh, I've seen that uh, the Senegalese Minister of Finance has visited the summit in El Salvador, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where I guess Bitcoin was discussed quite a lot. So um, have you seen anything like from the Senegalese government addressing Bitcoin and uh, what what's their stance? Well, I've, like so far, like um, I've, I've, I've basically tried to call up as high as, a, as I can possibly go with the central bankers and stuff at home, right? So I've talked to like a really higher up person, pers actually person, and they told me so far today, today as we speak today, there are no regulations, and there is no differentiation between buying Bitcoin versus buying a MP3 song, right? They say basically, <laughs> literally, actually, this is actually I'm talking, I'm talking like this is coming from like a, a higher up in the central bank, right? That's what they told me today, right? Today, there's no differentiation between basically buying these things because what it is actually is a is a digital asset. Obviously, one is more scarce than the other, or one is actually is more like a speculative than the other. But there's no different actually differentiation between buying a song downloaded downloaded to your phone versus like buying something like Bitcoin because it's, it's, it's still it's still a digital asset. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> All right. So the level of understanding is very low, obviously. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. But I mean, but so far, like, uh, maybe, maybe it was a way to like really simplify the explanation of actually what this thing is. You know, maybe it was just like a more like a simplification of actually what the answer is actually ultimately. But I believe that, I believe that, like, officials understand that there's a revolution happening, and I'm sure that they, they, they don't want to stifle basically growth uh, or, or, or like innovation, right? So maybe it's more like a reactive approach. They want to see somebody build something, then they can react. Actually, maybe have a law, but until then, I'm sure like it's a more like a wait and see kind of approach. But as okay. like as of as of today, there are like no existing regulations against Bitcoin today. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, and from what I understand, Senegal is quite a stable country, right? And, yes. And uh, yes. it's a functioning democracy. Let's say. Well, so it's a. Well, it's actually, well, it was one of the, it is actually today one of the only countries in West Africa that has never been taken over or ruled by the military. Mm -hmm. 
actually. Well, it's one of the only countries actually out there. So it's actually been fairly stable uh, over the years. Uh, let's, let's touch on wood and hopefully everything goes well. But we haven't had actually had any major conflicts or like military taken over anytime, anywhere. Yeah. Since the so, so do you believe like there's any room for, uh, for like political activism in terms of... Uh educating uh, the regulators and the politicians like what's happening let's say in US with the coin center and bitcoin policy institute and stuff like that yes i mean yeah of, of, of course like there needs to be like more regulations more understanding actually luckily like recently i saw the delegation that went to uh, uh, el salvador to meet up with all those other central bankers and talking about like really adoption of like cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin or whatnot, you know, because ultimately like there needs to be like a lot of regulation because you realize that even in the US, like some of these regulators, I feel like actually they don't actually even quite understand what's happening itself, right? So I can only imagine in the other part of the world actually where there's less information, there's even more confusion because nobody actually understands what's happening. Nobody really knows actually what like what is what is what, right? But it needs to be like more regulation. I mean, sorry, more regulation, but it needs to be like more education, like actually yeah. for like, like, I mean, like for the regulators. And for me, that's what I basically start to actually contribute my part, right? I talk to anybody who basically trying to get more clarification about things, you know? I don't, I, I mean, of course, like I don't want to like talk about like other like, like technologies that actually that don't quite make sense for me until actually at this particular day, at a particular point in time. But the idea is like, we just need to have like more open dialogue And then people like myself again. Luckily, I'm able to like be able to like try like like really bridge uh, English and the local languages and share more information. Mm -hmm. All right, but it's very important. Yeah. yeah. So let's discuss your projects. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you mostly focusing on right now? Is it the academy? Yes, actually, actually, there's three. Actually, I'm, of course, like, I'm always doing too much, right? So the <laughs> academy, uh, academy is actually very important because I'm actually slightly, like slightly, like slightly delayed right now, but it's definitely uh, actually still in in the works. The idea is that, um, like, 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 okay, let, let, let's, let, let's put it this way. Like right now, I, I'm working actually on a wallet as well. It's an experimental mm -hmm. wallet, basically, for that part of the world. I, I can't really talk about too much about it. But even my teammates right now, I feel like I need to basically share information with them as far as actually what I understand about Bitcoin and Lightning. So the course even is even actually amazing for them as well because they are like very seasoned, actually, uh, very seasoned like software engineers. But I feel like I can maybe contribute more actually um, more like uh, uh, like uh, explanations and like more basically like breakdown of like really how Bitcoin works on the core and how actually Lightning works. So the academy is actually 100% actually in works. I'm also like working on a wallet, like I said. Actually, it is an experimental Bitcoin wallet um, with uh, two of my friends, and we are still actually hacking at it. And hopefully, soon enough, we'll have more information. And of course, like the big, big thing that I'm majorly focusing on is the conference happening in Ghana this year at the end of the year in uh, in West Africa uh, on December 7th, 8th, and 9th in Accra, Ghana this year. Yeah. Uh, the wallet, that's the NAFA wallet, right? And yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yep, in the NFA, yeah, exactly. Yep. So, uh, Could you maybe describe it a little bit? Like, uh, what are the features and why <laughs> is there a need for, for a new wallet? <laughs> uh, yes, of course, of course, of course. Well, again, it's an, it's an, it's an experimental wallet because, like, what... Uh, and, and, and actually, actually, you're right what you said about... You, you're right, right? I feel like everybody's building a wallet. But if you notice, like, all these wallets are pretty much the same. Everybody's pretty much just looking into... There's not too much, like... It's not too much actually the differentiation between these wallets, right? Of course, sometimes like a little bit here and there, depending on how you do, like like is a custodial, self-custodial, non-custodial. If it's like um, if actually how the backup actually works, like how do you basically back up your seeds and the the process of it, depending on if it's Moon Wallet or like another wallet itself, right? But for me, Bitcoin is an open protocol, and I do not want for the West to dictate what the interface to Bitcoin should look like, mm -hmm. and especially for Africans, right? Because I feel like us again, I don't want us to be just like simply technology users, I want us to be able to basically create also like technology or like enhance technology and actually build the solutions for our problems, right? Because the problem is like, if we notice, if we notice right now, because most of the, most of these wallets actually come from the West, right? They come from Europe or they come from, they come from the US or they come from some of these places. But yeah. none of these people, not actually, none of these people actually have never, uh, actually have, have never spent enough time like living in places like Africa or living in places like really, let's say Latin America actually maybe, to like really figure out actually what these people need, right? So yes. for me, yeah, for me, like I want to do experimental because I don't want anybody to basically dictate to me what the wallet interface should look like, right? I feel like we should have the basically the freedom to experiment and basically build the solutions like for our problems and not the other way around. All right, cool. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, so, thank you, man. So, but I can tell you, but I can tell you it, it, it easily, actually, what the wallet does. The wallet, like, it's very actually easy. It's not like too extraordinary, but at the core, basically, concept, I want to give people access to BTC, 
to USD, be able to actually withdraw deposit through Lightning, and be able to do a couple of other like, like smaller features that are like very specific to the particular region. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like very, very, basically a very straightforward wallet. It's nothing too funky, nothing too crazy, but it's more like the way that I see it, a very simplified wallet for usage in a particular region. All right, all right. And could you please describe the Bitcoin Developers Academy, like who are the students and what do they learn? Yes, okay. So in the beginning, actually, it was a very wild like nest, like cast that I had, because initially, like, um, I was like trying to figure out a way to onboard anybody who really, with open mind, who wanted to learn how to code, especially want to learn how to code on top of Bitcoin itself, right? But I realized really quick that really quick that I was trying to please too many people and it wouldn't be possible. So what I did was like pretty much focus on the more, little bit more, I would say advanced, but people who have like some kind of exposure to programming first, and then help them on board to basically Bitcoin, right? But not only actually Bitcoin protocol level, because I've done chain code labs, uh, the Lightning and the Bitcoin uh, trucks there, but I realized that not everybody can be a big, become actually like a like a protocol level developer, right? It's good yeah. to understand itself, right? But I don't think that contribute actually contribute to the core is for everybody. So my actually approach was like seeing how hard it is, but then seeing also like how great the tools that are being built nowadays are, be it BDK, the Bitcoin developers kit, be it LDK, the Lightning developers kit, and actually seeing basically where the road is going when it comes to like Bitcoin application development. I said, okay. I want to focus on basically helping folks like onboard into like really building applications on top of the Bitcoin layer protocol. And the same, of course, like the, the, maybe like some like parts of like how the protocol works or whatnot. But the idea is like, how do you basically use the SDKs and tools that are out there nowadays to understand how to build a, a wallet, let's say from zero to one, and then help you understand how this network works and how to basically build applications on top of it. Right. But very straightforward application level development stuff and using existing li li libraries like BDK and LDK. So that's, the, that's just like what the school is for. Yeah, and uh, it's an online course, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, it's an online course. It's not going to be like cohort based, but mostly actually pre-recorded videos, like short videos, you know. And uh, uh -huh. again, again, like I, I look at it basically. Who's my who's my uh, actually actually audience? And right now, actually, I'm telling you, like my actually perfect audience as even the people that I work with, because I understand like like I have more knowledge to share when it comes to like how Bitcoin works, or, or, or at least how I understand it. You know, so and and and, and, and I'm not I'm, I'm not like a professional, like an expert in anything like that, but I'm just basically sharing what I learned and what I know, and I believe actually it will it will actually help anybody as well. Oh yeah, that's the best approach. So the yep, website exactly. is bitcoindevelopers.academy, right? The that academy, yes, exactly. Like right now, right? So you can uh, actually remove the, like the some of the some of the pre-existing actually material that was there, but within the next couple of weeks, for sure, it'll definitely be live. And if you are on the list of emails, you will get an email ping you when the, basically the course goes live. But it's definitely happening. All right, all right. Uh, so let's go to the conference. Why mm -hmm. are you holding the conference in Ghana and not in Senegal? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good actually question people ask me all the time, man. Because <laughs> what the reality the reality is that um, this is the first like really major Bitcoin conference in 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 West Africa, and I wanted to for one like send a message to like places like Senegal and stuff because that I don't necessarily support the franc CFA itself, the local currency, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to have it and I will to basically want to hold this conference itself, right? We're going to spend this money, like really actually invest in the local economy because we're going to be like booking booking a, a, a venue, hotels, transportation, food, all that stuff, all the basically money that'll be invested in the country itself. I want to do it in Ghana because actually Ghana makes more sense because for one, my, my co-organizer, uh, main co-organizer, co Farida, she's an activist from Togo, lives in Ghana right now, mm -hmm. right? Uh, two, Ghana is actually an English-speaking country. And I understand that the majority, actually, of the, of the, of the Bitcoin community is mostly actually English-speaking. And I want them to be very comfortable. I want them to be, like, really have a great, a, a great experience, like, for the very, very first conference, actually, in West Africa itself, right? And yeah. two... Again, right, I just want to send a message overall to this actually uh, uh, CFA Frank Zones that we don't really support them. Like Ghana has a city, they have their own currency, which is like loosely, loosely basically pegged to the, to the US dollar, but it's a floating currency and it's an independent country. And we want to basically set an example because I believe that actually Ghana is an example country in West Africa. And we want to basically just be pages and uh, use it uh, as a way to hold uh, this great conference we, we're going to be doing in December. All right. Yeah, these are very good reasons. So, uh, yes, <laughs> thank you. Is it going to be like a technical conference or what's actually uh, two? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So I've already reached reached out reached out to um uh to Ben to Ben Ark 
I've reached out mm-hmm. to um, to anybody like uh, like all the like all the guys that do like all the raspberry the Raspberry Pi um, uh, setups, like all the hardware offline or online. Uh, Ellen Pass, Ellen Ellen Bits, like all these guys. I basically reached out to um, Open Norms. I reached out to everybody, and we're going to basically do like actually hands-on workshops for sure because I want the local population to benefit from it. And of course, we also do the typical uh, sessions and like talks basically uh, for like like a typical conference. But if but 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 for sure it'll be like more hands-on heavy like for the local for the local attendees. Mm-hmm. And yes. it's a Bitcoin only conference, right? Yes, it's a Bitcoin and Lightning only conference. Yes. Uh huh. Nice. Yep. Nice. Yes, exactly. Right now, so ideally, it's like we would invite anybody, like all the pioneers in Bitcoin, like yourself, anybody working on hardware wallets, anybody working on hardware, anything open hardware. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's um, if it's a seed signer or like those kind of projects. But the idea is that we want to bring him out there and have him like really share some knowledge with the local populations, especially with the local students, right? Because we will have definitely uh, <coughs> so excuse me a heavy a heavy uh, technical student attend uh, actually uh, like uh, attendance actually there, and we want to for sure that actually leave this place like really like better than they found them, right? Like really leave knowledge behind, leave hardware behind, and like really help us like. Uh, on board, like the next like hundred users, a hundred thousand users in the local population. Oh, yeah. idea. And the website for that is afrobitcoin.org. Yes, sir. Afrobitcoin.org. And if you are RSVP, we are about to actually we actually already have like our partnerships being set up. We already have like uh, two official partners and five official sponsors already actually with um, already supporting us with funds and everything else. So now we're just basically putting the program uh, program together. We just hired a uh, company out of actually uh, South Africa to help us with uh, logistics, and it is definitely happening December seventh, eighth, and ninth in Accra, Ghana. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, yep. Let me invite up uh, Heritage Faludu yes. from Nigeria, I guess. Awesome. Awesome. So he's just connecting, and I guess he'll have something to add here. Okay. Yeah. Um... So while he connects, uh, what about Bitcoin Teranga, uh, Bitcoin tours in Senegal? Yes, actually, so, so actually, so that is, that is run, run by my brother, uh, as a matter of fact. So right now we have like a, we have like a project called uh, Bitcoin Village, actually through Bitcoin Teranga itself, because uh, we it's actually funny enough the uh, the mayor of the particular island was just in El Salvador, like like actually like like last week when I was in Oslo. As a matter of fact, right, I saw him trying the moon, the, the sorry, the the wallet wallet of Satoshi. Uh, trying it, um, trying it out there in uh, in Azonte and stuff. So the idea is like we want to set up like uh, something really similar in Senegal, like a, like a zone where we can actually have also like uh, actually bring in actually more like a like a like a Bitcoin tourism per se, and actually yeah. have people be able to like accept BTC like through the route of or, or basically through our trips there. But it's mostly actually run run by my brother, who's like a, uh, definitely a Bitcoin advocate these days. And wants to help like spread uh, education in Senegal, and also like want to actually help people accept basically BTC. Mm-hmm. Good, yep. good. Uh, yeah, seems we we won't have heritage followed in joining after all. Uh, okay, so, good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, maybe some connecting issues. Um, okay, I I've also read in one of uh, Gladstein's article uh, mm-hmm. something about like uh, lightning enabled telecom endpoints in Senegal. <laughs> What, yes, that? so that's a so that that is a project that I'm working on. So the idea actually is that uh, to work on uh, to have like uh, resilient communication systems that are powered by lightning in case of like um, especially if you want to be able to buy communication possibly. So that is a uh, yes, that's actually something we're working on right now for like, uh, but we can talk about it offline if possible. <laughs> yeah, of because course. it actually has like yeah, it, ha- it have like a, uh, some kind of actually implications to it a little bit. So. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, heritage, you are on. Um, yes. Thanks. Um, thanks, Joseph. Thanks for Diop for everything you've been saying. I'm heritage fellow. Don. I'm um, actually the host for Bitcoin Nigeria Media. And um, I just want to like um, ask a straight question and also like um, buttress the point for Diop has been talking about. Um, my question is um actually i'm very very excited about what the uh, upcoming uh, bitcoin african conference in ghana is going to like um, bring into the west african um bitcoin ecosystem itself and um, you mentioned something about um the 
availability of hardware devices that that's actually a very very great issue we like um going through in africa right now and i'm very excited because you are aware and cognizant about that um i was interviewing no abubakar no kali of recursive capital last week and um he also doubled down on it, and I asked him the same question. So um, your response was that, oh, you encouraging the process whereby Bitcoin developers are going to like, um, not just protocol level Bitcoin developers alone, but developers who will be able to like um, build infrastructures around Bitcoin services. So um, let's assume we, we have that ongoing presently in Africa, but then how do we tend to like um, improve the structures around having indigenous african companies or probably having um companies from the western region invest in hardware content into africa especially getting raspberry pi setting up notes um it's not as seamless as it should be in in um in africa right now nigeria to be precise there are different projects running there are different uh, process of running notes but we know it cost and arm and leg. It needs um, ordering from Amazon, probably getting the Raspberry Pi and some other hardware devices from um, eBay and all. So, Ford, I, I don't know. My question would be how do you intend and or what are you putting in place to like um, contribute your quota in solving this problem in Africa and um, West Africa to be precise. So that's my question. When you give response to that, I'm just going to like uh, give my point about buttressing everything you've been saying, bro. That's why I'm here, Trezor and uh, Joseph. All right, Fuda, you are on. You dropped off, but uh, you are back on. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't catch like the last piece of the question. Joseph, do you know do you know what he what he was asking? Yeah, I believe uh, like the availability of uh, full nodes in Africa, and it's probably hard to get uh, your hands on Raspberry Pis and stuff like that. So, if there is like any educational or yeah uh, educational drive about setting up your own node in West Africa, yeah, I mean like uh, that's, 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 always, that's always problematic, obviously, right? Because that's really that's why I was working on when you asked me earlier about like some of the other connectivity stuff. I was working on uh, some low bandwidth with Bitcoin, which uh, with uh, Richard Myers. Um, because that's a problem over there, right? Lack of resources. Uh, first of all, we have the lack of electricity sometimes, and also we have like the lack of basically connectivity, right? If you look at if you look at Senegal, connecting the actually internet is is actually fairly expensive, unfortunately, right? You have to actually pay quite a bit to be connected, and I can only imagine having to actually run run run, run like a full node out of like a center or like out of your own place is going to be like really basically costly, right? So I think like th those things actually will be addressed over time. Um, as a blockchain gets like uh, gets like uh, slimmer, as like uh, actually updates like Taproot helps us like actually have like of course like it's more actually helps more like on the block size things right, like as basically signatures become smaller, then we can actually fit more actually more transactions per block or, or, or whatnot. But we also gotta think about like ways to optimize basically connectivity between mobile devices and nodes themselves, right? And also like doing more stuff basically um, uh, offline uh, than we actually have to do live like connect, like connected. So unfortunately, I don't have like a, a, a good answer for you right now. Like we don't have like a perfect, a perfect solution for that. But I believe actually over time it will work better. And as basically data compression gets better and actually node optimization gets better, as we can basically limit the connectivity between the mobile devices and the nodes, I believe it will get better over time. But right now we just have to take what we have. Awesome. Uh, so I wanted to ask about your opinion on if Bitcoin could potentially destabilize the CFA countries. Because uh, in the past, we have seen that the French can support like a military coup. Yes, yeah. Or, yeah, and install some kind of puppet government. Yes. So what, what's your opinion like on C CAR, like Central African Republic, and French potentially getting involved there in, in, in like an unpleasant way? Yeah, I mean, like right now, I believe like French are the French are very aware that they are not very popular in West Africa, especially with the youth itself, right? We notice that in 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 the CAR right now, um, Russia is like really taking over a little bit, like filling up the filling filling in the vacuum, right? Because the French left, and there's more people from the Wagner Group, and all these people actually being present there in the, in the region itself. But can really the the idea is like can really actually French destabilize one of these countries today? I don't think so, actually. I think it was much easier back in the days 
to, 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 to do so, like back in the you know back in the early days where there was not too much like too much connectivity in the world. But nowadays people are people are way too aware and way too alert for friends to be pulling off something like that actually be able to get away with it today. I mean in, in this modern day, so I don't really think so. Uh, with the CAR again, this rule is so new and so like really left field that I mean none of us actually are actually Bitcoiners were ready for it. Personally, for me, I would have never thought in my lifetime I would see uh, a country in the French African um, um, Frank zone actually adapt to Bitcoin as a, as a legal tender, but it's happening right now. So my goal actually is to be in the CAR next month, and maybe I have a better answer for you when I get back. But right now, I believe that I don't think the French can do anything about it. Again, Bitcoin is a highly decentralized money, right? So I don't think they will they will go actually overnight and say, okay, well, we're going to basically just leave the CFA and go to Bitcoin as a legal tender for everywhere, right? I don't think it will work because that country, first of all, doesn't have not, not enough electricity and not enough connectivity and not enough basically smartphone adoption for it to work there, right? But I believe that actually the legal tender law is the first step again into like financial emancipation. It's the first step, right? We start there, then we can basically grow into like figuring out a way to actually set up like rules or set up like the, the, the foundation to build like a better financial infrastructure with Bitcoin. But I believe actually the law is just the first step. All right, nice. Uh, I would like to invite uh, the listeners to raise their hands and ask their question if they are or if they want to, because we've got like uh, last couple of minutes. Nice. Uh, but uh, so in terms of uh, like the legacy banking system and mm -hmm. the payment systems mm -hmm. we use in Europe and in America, I believe like uh, it's not very covered in countries like the CFA countries, right? So yes. do you believe like uh, these African countries can actually leapfrog this system and go straight for yes. like the Bitcoin ecosystem? Is yes. that... Yeah? 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%
So first in the educational part, we can say that in Bitcoin Senegal, we have done more than 20 meetups online or physical because uh, I just came back in Senegal in November. But since uh, before that, I've started some online meetings. We used to have around 40 people all, all the time. And since I'm here, we, yes, if you had online meetup and physical meetup, more than 20. We also have a YouTube page where we do some Bitcoin educational video in Wolof, Senegal native language. So to answer your question, uh, how can we make like the knowledge about Bitcoin available for the local population? So this is one of the things we have done in Bitcoin Senegal. And we are trying to be everywhere where the Senegalese is to answer its questions in Wolof, in French and in, and in English. Um, the other things also I, I wanted to talk about is the adoption. Currently, we manage because I am a volunteer in Bitcoin Senegal, but I have a Bitcoin only company. And we managed to convince more than, let's say, eight businesses to accept Bitcoin as a payment method here in Dakar. We can say we have not like a Bitcoin beach, but we have a zone where you have more than five businesses, restaurants, etc., to accept Bitcoin as a payment method. We can say that this is something that is starting. We are far behind the uh, English-speaking countries like Ghana, Nigeria, but people are more and more aware here about Bitcoin before Lightning, because Lightning is something that will happen later. We just had a meetup about the Lightning Network this Sunday. Um, the last thing that I want to finish by is the knowledge about Bitcoin, this is something really complex because you have to know a little bit about economy, a little bit about finance, a little bit about cryptography, programming, etc. So what we do, what we do here in the ground is more to learn about people issues because people issues in our country are not people issues in European or American countries. So the educational thing, we are doing it, the adoption, is on its way, but just be sure, like, here in Senegal, we know about Bitcoin, and more and more people are using Bitcoin as, a, as an edge about hyperinflation, but also as a tool to make remittance and to have some savings. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for that. And I would encourage everybody to follow Bitcoin Senegal, especially for, from the country. Um, yeah, we've got Bertrand joining in. We've got a couple of more minutes. Oh, Heritage, do you have something to add? Yes, yes. Um, what I'm just going to add is that um, what Bitcoin Seniga said is actually true, and it's something like um, walking um around through Africa, just like um, food has said as well. Um, there's actually need for education, and um, there's actually need for countries uh, for um companies who, who are like um hardware service providers. Imagine the conference that is going to be coming up in Ghana. We food said um there will be raspberry pi there will be provision for all those things to like um to showcase the technicality around this and make people understand it but we should also note that in africa as we speak i i think anita posh who was um running a a program around bitcoin education as well the last time i checked on uh the 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 trezors the code wallet she was using was supported by Trezor. You know what that means? In Nigeria, I co-found a platform for uh, Bitcoin education and adoption, majorly preaching a Bitcoin gospel. But then when you speak to people, when they learn about self-custody, they tend to ask questions. Oh, code wallet, warm wallet, how do I get a code wallet? You tend to see that they are, they are not like companies profiling it situated in Africa. They are, you just have to order directly from Trezor. You have to order directly and wait for days or probably depend on a courier services and all. So when they have first-hand access to this, it's going to like spur adoption in this continent because we, we know what the population says. People keep saying, I'm from Nigeria, but 
because I'm going to like um dub majorly on Nigeria. People keep saying adoption rates keep moving fast in Africa, it keeps moving fast in Nigeria. But we Africans, Nigerians, we also understand that we need to double up on education because we have a lot of people in the remote areas that need access to understanding what this innovation entails. So um thanks for hosting this space. Thanks for having the up on this and um i appreciate everyone contribution in making the bitcoin ecosystem a successful one and also getting people financial freedom awesome thank you, so much, uh, thank you for the kind words yes yeah i i would just like to mention that uh uh Trezor can be actually built um, by uh, like the hobbyists. It's fully open source. The hardware is fully open source as well. You can find the schematics on our GitHub. So if there is someone proficient with like uh, soldering and electronics, uh, and if you can get the parts which are quite commonly accessible, you can actually build your own Trezors if it's uh, hard to get it in, in the country. Yeah, Bitcoin Senegal, you can ask your question. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry, bro, but I really have to run. Actually, I am so I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, the time, the time today, the time today, I have a call like in about six minutes, so I just wanted to get ready for that, like uh, if possible. And then I will, I will be more than happy to come back on the call if possible. All right, no problem for that. Uh, I'll message you uh, if we are still on. So, yes. thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much for joining in. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you again for having me, and uh, hopefully we'll actually chat again for sure. All right. Thank you. All right. See you thank around. you so much. All Bye. right. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Uh, yeah. So Bitcoin Senegal, did you have anything to add? Yeah. Yeah. This was related to one of your questions about how people buy and sell Bitcoin here. Of course, they are using a lot, uh, some, some charts, but we have one running local exchanges built by someone who, who, which was on, on the attendees, but he left. And we have another project. So people are building exchanges, but also local wallets. This is the only thing I, I wanted to add. Thanks. All right. Great to hear. So I guess we are probably done here, unless anyone wants to add anything to the debate. And I guess not. So uh, just follow Fode. He's at... Diop Fode on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. Check out the afrobitcoin.org, which is the conference in Ghana in December. And yeah, uh, read Alex Gladstein's articles where Fode and the adoption of Bitcoin in developing countries is uh, covered heavily, which is actually how I came to meet Fode and come to Oslo and to get introduced to Fode personally. So I'm very glad for that. Uh, all right, so I guess this is it for today. Unfortunately, for that, I didn't have uh, that much time, but one hour was very, very, uh, very fine. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed today's session and follow Trezor, follow me, and join us for next Fiat Free sessions. Uh, there are going to be still two more in June, and we are going to follow uh, to cover Bitcoin adoption in Cuba and in Venezuela as well. So thank you, guys. See you around. Cheers and bye.